in general, what I've learned in 15 years in our business is uh, it's definitely a forgiveness, not per- permission kind of narrative. And so, you know, if you were ex ante asking uh, LPs, and, and I, I remember uh, several of them back in the kind of 2015 time time zone, but like when we'd give our updates, you know, they think we were kind of completely off the wagon, just like you guys are investing in these kind of uh, libertarian nut jobs, lots of speculators and mercenaries. And so bluntly, we just, we, we didn't ask them for permission. We basically said, okay, we're going to make a number of, uh, it wasn't small, but it was sort of 25 ish investments in that first fund where we, where we kind of really, uh, got focused on crypto and we made, we made smaller investments. So the way I think about these things is it's sort of a, uh, a bet sizing exercise when you're when you're investing in these emerging areas, and so you know our investments in in Solana, I mean, it was two and a half million dollars uh, over the course of three rounds. So that's tiny compared to some of the other investments we were making uh, in other infrastructure companies, and that was also the case for you know Algorand and 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 OpenSea and Brave and and others. And so what we did is we basically made smaller investments that in aggregate totaled uh, a single core investment out of our fund eight portfolio. Um, and so we managed risk on the cost basis perspective, but then turned, you know, that call it sort of $20 million into five or 6 billion. So, um, so, so I, I think with LPs in general, you're not advertising th- the kind of sh- the shiny new thing that sounds really scary until after you've proven that you were successful at doing it. And, um, and that's worked out pretty well for us. I, I mean, I, I, I do think even today though, there are institutional investors who look at crypto and think, um, you know, this 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 whole thing, you know, still hasn't proven its wares in terms of use cases for, uh, for you know, enterprises or end consumers. Still has a lot to prove, and and you know, I think that's I think that's fair feedback. But I think much of the same could have been said about, you know, the web in 1995 or 96. And I, I still remember using the Mosaic browser in my office over the San, you know Stanford Center for Design Research, and it, it wasn't casually obvious that you know Google was going to be built on top of that or uh, or Facebook or 15 years later Uber for that matter. So I still think we're in those early early days um, where you're you're you know you're kind of trusting that um, the, these new technologies are going to then light up applications that you could have never conceived of ex ante.